We're live. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome on into another Monday Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we are joined by a very special guest from Horse Soldiers um, and their bourbon, Brian Avery. Uh, thank you for being with us today uh, on this wonderful Veterans Day. Uh, we appreciate your service. We appreciate uh, everything that your company is doing to provide uh, jobs for the veterans uh, and that type of thing as well. So cheers to you, sir. Thank you for being here. All Matt. right. So let me go to the chat real quick and say, um, any veterans in the chat, would you guys please name yourselves and name who's in the chat and we'll go over there and then we're going to turn it over to Brian here in just a second. Okay. So we got Richie Z, Victoria C, Linux Cat, Donald, uh, Elvis Presley, who I know is a veteran. So thanks for your service. Kilojolt, Ben Demon Hunter, uh, Vegas Art. Let's see who else in here. Trev Wilson. I know he's a veteran. Thank you for your service. Uh, Robot Scott, Ben Stahl, Jason Grizek, uh, Andrew Sparrell. Uh, Mark Goins, uh, Vegas Art, and him already. Dramang, Kentucky, Ron Henderson, Brendan Elliott, Trey Coons, uh, Ice House, Steve A, and oh, and Mark. Oh, Mark was a Marine. Link for your service, Mark. Ron was in the U.S. Air Force, Trev's U.S. Army Infantry. Thanks, guys, for your service. Really appreciate all of our veterans out here from all the different branches of the military. And let's see. And Elvis is a disabled vet from the Army. Well, thank you guys very much for being here tonight and uh, helping Veterans Day. We've brought you guys a very special evening here with Brian from the Horse Soldier Bourbon. And I'm going to give it, turn it over to you, Brian. You're oh, muted. He's unmuted. You're muted, Brian. You got to unmute your mic. There you go. There you go. I switched from my headset. Uh, I had an echo in there. So, oh, okay. Um, first of all, thank you guys very much for having us on. Um, and thank you for all the guys that are on the chat as well that are veterans. Uh, the team at, at Four Soldier Bourbon appreciates everybody's service. Um, I think someone had mentioned, again, I had a little bit of an echo there, but somebody had mentioned uh, they thanked me for my service. I wanted to be clear I didn't serve. Um, I, I work with these guys and uh, right now, I have the honor of, of carrying their bags most of the time, which is great. So, uh, thank you guys very much, all the way across the board. Definitely. So, um, I think most of you guys know um, I'm coming from a big uh, Air, Fo Air Force and down the line military family. My dad, 28 years in the Air Force. Uh, my brother is in the Air Force. My brother in law is currently serving in Iraq in the Army. Um, my grandfather is a World War II vet on B-17s on, uh, and B-25s. Uh, my other grandfather built the airplanes. He was, just, he was blind in one eye. And then my great-great-grandfather, I'll show you guys a picture, was, in a, was a rough rider with Teddy Roosevelt in Cuba. He was actually shot in the heart while he was in Cuba. And thankfully, his pocket watch saved his life. And that's the only reason that uh, I'm even here today is because of that pocket watch. And his father was in the Civil War. And then his father was, unfortunately, I don't have a picture of, was in the Mexican-American War. So we come from a very long line of veterans serving this country since we've been here from uh, Bohemia back in the day. So, all right. So I guess I'll turn it over to you, Brian. Why don't you talk a little about Horse Soldier and go to the story, and we'll go through some awesome bourbon with you. Sure, sure. So Horse Soldier bourbon was started by a group of retired Green Berets, Special Forces guys that uh, served in the Army uh, together in, in multiple uh, combat engagements. Um, in particular, there was a group of six uh, of the original guys that started. Um, all of them, again, retired Green Berets. They had worked together on different teams, uh, some in Iraq, some in Afghanistan, Africa. They had served all over the place. Um, two of our original partners uh, were actually part of the team that landed in northern Afghanistan on October 19th of 2001. Um, five weeks after the attacks on the World Trade Center, the, the United States sent in uh, several special forces teams. Uh, and our guys were on two of those teams. Uh, the first one being ODA 595. Uh, ODA 595 was led by Mark Nutsch and Bob Pennington. Uh, Mark, and, Mark and Bob are both partners in our organization. Uh, they, When they met up with the Northern Alliance in Afghanistan, they were actually handed 12 horses and said, here's how we have to go to get to uh, 
fight the Taliban. Uh, they all kind of, from what I can tell, they all looked at each other like, well, what the hell do we do with these things? Um, <laughs> and uh, Mark was the only one that had ever actually ridden a horse, as the story goes. Uh, Mark's a cowboy, a true cowboy. Went through high school with his dad, taking him and his brother, putting horses in the trailers and going in, and going to other people's ranches to pick up their cattle that had gotten out and all these other things that the true cowboy and actually went to school, I believe, on a rodeo scholarship. So he taught his guys how to ride. They made makeshift uh, uh, saddles. And uh, as they tell the story, the horses didn't like having them on there. Um, you know, the Afghans were uh, – smaller guys uh, our guys are you know especially green berets they're probably all over six feet tall probably 240 pounds each and they climbed on these horses and as they tell it the the horses were pretty pissed off um i think one of the guys said that they were crossbred uh, a horse and a werewolf uh, so they were angry um and these guys had to ride these horses for 23 days to get into battle uh with the taliban and and really wipe them out um they got they, they fought alongside the, the Afghans, and, and it was just an amazing battle from everything that I've heard about it. Um, Scotty Neal, who's also a partner on our team, uh, Billy Howell, were amongst some of the other teams that came in at that same time. Uh, those guys were all special forces, went in on the ground, uh, took care of the Taliban as well. And then when everybody started to uh, uh, retire out, they wanted to stay together as a team. And to do that, they knew that they could go back in as, as contractors. It wasn't the route that they wanted to take. They wanted to become entrepreneurs. They wanted to really shoot for their own American dream that they had been protecting. Um, and that's a term that they use quite a bit. And uh, at that point, they kind of came up with the idea. That, well, actually, they had a couple of ideas. I think one of them was to set up a boat and go scuba diving in the in the Mediterranean. And, and that, that one got... Uh, that one got worked over a bit, and then they ended up kind of figuring out, well, we like to drink bourbon, so let's figure out how to do this. Uh, and they decided to distill bourbon, um, spent the next two years kind of traveling around the country and around the world uh, trying to figure out the process of distilling. And not just brown spirits, but clear spirits. They knew there was this craft that they had to learn about. Um, and as they went over to Ireland and Scotland, you know, a one-week trip turned into a month-long trip, turned into two months, and then they went uh, across the United States. They would link up with other veterans that were working for distilleries or that were distillers themselves. And that community is very open. And so yes, they brought the guys in, and they would show them how to do these things, and they figured it all out. And um, one of the things that I've learned about Green Berets is the way that they train is very structured. And then the way they, they attack the market is probably even more structured. Um, you know, they've, they've figured out how to bring people into the battle with them. Um, and they have done a great job of that. They've got some industry professionals that have joined up with them. As I said, I, I don't come from a military background. Um, as soon as I met those guys, I, I don't know that I could have been any more loyal to anybody else. They really have done some amazing things. Um, they're true to their craft. Uh, they use all natural ingredients. Everything is made in the United States. All of our products come from the United States. The only thing in our bottle that doesn't come from the United States is a cork. Um, that's because it has to come from somewhere else. Um, but this team has really done some amazing things just as they've built this organization. You know, they've brought their families into it. Uh, even the labeling, all those things in our first run was all done by hand. And you have, you know, we have video of uh, four or five people up there with their kids at the distillery just putting labels on bottles. Nice. And so, you know, it's really become a family affair, a uh, small team, very close, very loyal to each other. Um, and I think we all kind of feel like we're we're fighting the battle. And, and luckily right now, I think we're winning it, which is great. Definitely. Very impressed with the product, that's for sure. Um, some guys want to know, what states are you available in? Yeah. So currently, uh, we are available in, in seven states. Um, originally when we first launched, we were only available in Florida. Um, last year in April, I launched Indiana. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. And so we're launching in, in a couple of Midwest states, but right now Indiana is the only one. We just recently launched California, Texas, Nevada, 
Um, they kind of all rolled out at the same time. And then we have also done uh, just recently Virginia and New York. Awesome. So seven states all together. Okay. Okay. A couple more questions coming in. When did the distillery start and uh, where is the distillery located? So we have our, our headquarters are in St. Pete, Florida. Um, we don't really distill out of that location. We have a small distilling operation there that we're getting ready to open to the public. Um, that'll have our tasting room and the typical experience, uh, experience marketing environment where you go in, you'll do the tastings. We'll have some barrels there that we're aging. We'll be working on cocktails and those kinds of things, and you'll be able to pick up product there. Um, but we don't distill at the large scale there. Uh, in the process of going through this, determining how to distill correctly and do all those things, uh, our team met up with a group out of Columbus, Ohio, and we co-op with that team. And so what they did was they kind of helped us figure out a lot of what we didn't know, you know, five years ago, six years ago. And as we really started to kind of launch this company, um, they helped us determine what, what is the proper mash bill that we wanted to meet our flavor profile. What are the things that we needed to know that we just knew we didn't know? I mean, like I said, we were, nobody came from the liquor business. It was just something that we knew we wanted to do. And as they uh, really helped us along in this process, our team became very loyal to them. And so we uh, created a cooperative agreement with them. And so our team goes in, I don't know, probably every couple of months, maybe every six weeks now at this stage. And all of our own ingredients are shipped in. So we purchase everything in our mash bill. We, we send it to that location. We purchase our own barrels. We actually went out and sourced them. We traveled to multiple locations around the United States to make sure that we had the right barrels for what we wanted to do. Um, everything is distilled there by our own team. Again, our we have a master distiller on our team. They help us. They assist us when we need it. Of course, you're, we're still learning every day. Um, and so we, we barrel everything there, rack it there in Columbus, Ohio, and then they bottle it for us and ship it out for us. So it's a unique arrangement. I think you're seeing some of that uh, in the industry as a new lot more of it, yeah. up, um, that don't necessarily want to go through the traditional sourcing model. It just works really well for us. Yeah. Where do you guys get your grains from currently? What states? So we get, uh, again, all of our stuff is coming from the United States. Our corn is coming from uh, Indiana, uh, okay. as well as probably one other state. But I think the majority of it, if not all of it, is actually coming from one or two farms in Indiana. Oh, wow. um, awesome. And then uh, the the wheat in our weeded bourbon comes from uh, Wyoming. Okay. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head where the rye comes from in our straight. Um, okay. But I, I can I could always find that out for you guys and let you know. Okay. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, it's all domestic, I can tell you that. And it probably may even be coming from the same producer. Okay. Um, sense. But yeah, we, we work with only U.S. farms. Okay, and where, uh, what barrel Cooper are you guys using? Um, we are using, I believe it's out of Missouri. I don't have the okay. name of the cooperage. Let me. I'm going to send a text. Okay, to one of our guys. Um, but uh, and some of that, often a lot of that information isn't always disclosed. Oh, for sure. Um, it depends on who we're working with and what situation. Um, I'm sending a quick text message to one of our uh, Sounds good. guys. Um, Matt, while he's doing that, why don't we go ahead and show off one of these amazing bottles uh, yeah, so we can yeah. talk a little bit about the metal that they're using for that as well. Yeah, and the cast and all that stuff. So, what do you want to pour first? Because I need something in my glass, good sir. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> I'm going to show a special bottle first. Before I do that. So last year, my cousin happens to live in St. Pete, got me a bottle that's actually signed here. Um, by them. And I guess you could tell who those two guys are. That'd be great. Right? Yeah. So the, uh, that bottle is signed by Mark Nutch. So Mark Nutch is the captain of the, or was the captain of the horse soldiers. So that special forces team that went in first, as I mentioned earlier, Mark Nutch and Bob Pennington uh, are on our team. They were the leaders of that team. Uh, in the movie 12 Strong that was based on them, uh, Chris Hemsworth plays Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris is much prettier than Mark. <laughs> don't tell him I told you that. Um, so Mark is on that bottle. Uh, he was the leader of the team. And then also Scott Neal, who is one of the founders of the company. He's on that team. And Mark went in with one of the other special forces teams uh, at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. So we'll start with your, I guess, your horse soldier premium 
Uh, Forge and Fire Straight Bourbon Whiskey at 87 proof. I guess yep. you can tell us the mash bill and all the other good pretty nuances of this. So that one there's uh, got a rye content to it. Sits at about 30% rye. Um, still high corn. Um, but that one uh, is one of the ones that actually just won double gold earlier this year in San Francisco at the World Spirits Competition. Fantastic. Um, to me, that just a, it's, it's a great bourbon that sits well on its own. Um, a lot of times, uh, bourbon, some of the bourbons like that are really more geared toward the cocktail. Um, that one, I really feel like it sits well on its own. People who don't prefer the higher proof bourbons really seem to lean towards that. You know, I did a tasting the other day for a couple hundred people, and it was funny. The you often think everybody's going to lean towards your favorite. Um, but we see a tremendous amount of people go towards this straight um, for a, a multitude of reasons. Uh, the other thing with that bourbon is it does make an amazing cocktail. Um, I, I would put that up against anybody's behind the bar to make an old fashioned a Manhattan. We do a, we just did a whiskey mule at the museum thing down here at the motor speedway. And of the 12 people that were in there producing cocktails, I'm proud to say that ours always had a line and everybody had, you know, cups with our logo on it because they, they kept coming back for that whiskey mule compared to the other ones. And that's not knocking our competition. We happen to have a good young bartender with us that uh, was kicking butt and mixing up some amazing drinks. Yeah, I could see that would be a, that would definitely stand up to the ice and all the other ingredients for sure in a uh, yeah. cocktail. You get a little um, bit of heat on the front of that, a little bit of pepper. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I would describe it as heat, but you definitely get a little bit of the pepper on the front side of that. Um, nice and warm as it's going down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a balanced bourbon that, uh, you know, as I think all three of ours have a great nose to them. Um, and I don't think that the nose lies to you. You know, there are oftentimes you, you'll smell a, a, a spirit of any kind and you think you're picking up on things in it. Uh, then when you try it, you don't quite get all those characteristics in it. I think all three of our bourbons give you what you're smelling. They don't lie to you. Definitely. Okay. So tell me about the bottle itself and this really cool cork. Sure. Sure. So, Yes. Um, the bottle in that story that I was telling as our team was kind of rolling out there trying to figure out what this what this needed to become. What did it what should the mash bill be? What would our play, favorite profile be and all of that? Um, as you go through that process, you then also have to now start talking about your branding and what you know what is the, what's the bottle that you want to put it in. And as you guys were showing, you know, our bottle has a tremendous amount of significance to it. Um, Elizabeth, who is responsible for our branding, has just done an amazing job with this. Uh, we call it bar jewelry. And I know all the guys laugh because if it wasn't for Elizabeth, this would probably be wrapped in camouflage with crayon on the front of it. So uh, it is just a bunch of guys in, in uh, shorts and flip flops most of the time. And she classes us up quite a bit. So uh, this bottle was designed to take the shape of a soldier at attention. You can see it's got the broad shoulders. It narrows down. Um, the emblem in the in the center that is actually part of the bottle, that is a hatchet and an arrow, which uh, represent the Ranger and Special Forces symbol. Um, the label on the front has uh, the image on the front there is a statue that resides just uh, near Ground Zero in New York City. It's called America's First Response statue. Um, the artist that created that uh, claims that he didn't put anybody specific on that horse. These are This is a rendering of the horse soldiers as a cumulative group, as I'll call it. Um, I know one of our guys, and I won't name him, he claims that it's him, but I don't know what it is. Um, this guy seems to be, again, much better looking than him. Uh, and then one of the really neat things about this bottle is that uh, when we were going through the process, uh, as I said, you, you really want your branding to stand out. We didn't want to be the round bottle on the shelf. And you can buy those, you know, by the boatload from sure. China and you can get 20 cent bottles and you can do all those things. Uh, we really wanted this to be solid. Um, I mean, the bottle by itself without any juice in it probably weighs close to two pounds. Wow. Uh, very solid, very thick. And so as we described what we were trying to do and we showed drawings to the people that manufacture the bottles for us, they said, well, you've got to create custom molds for that. Mm -hmm. And we said, sure, we go ahead, we can do that. And then they told us how much they were. 
Mm -hmm. And we said, well, hold on a minute. We can't do that yet. <laughs> we don't have enough money for that. Um, and so uh, in that process, we determined what kind of uh, uh, steel goes into making a mold. And so our team, once they determined that, actually reached out to their friends on the Port Authority Police Department because the steel that is used to make a mold is similar, if not the same, I believe, as the steel that was used in the World Trade Center. They were then sent two pieces of World Trade Center steel that had been recovered from the site. And uh, our guys, you can see us on our YouTube channel, Horse Soldier Bourbon, where our guys are melting it down in a ceremony and our molds are made from World Trade Center steel. Yeah, that's so and amazing. Every bottle is actually struck with uh, World Trade Center steel. That that's is awesome. amazing. And yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> I still, uh, you know, I used to get chills when I hear heard the story. Yeah, I just more, thought I it more myself. It kind of it rattles you a little bit when you think about what that means. Yeah. Um, and then on the top of it, you can see there. There's there's basically an imprint that mirrors our uh, challenge coin. We have a challenge coin that goes into our other bottle, our Commander Select. Um, and that's our, our corporate logo, which is American Freedom Distillery. Uh, Horse Soldier is one of the brands that we have, along with Wrecker. <coughs> excuse me. And we'll have a couple of other ones over the years, of course, that will come out. Uh, but our parent is American Freedom Distillery. You can see there's an eagle on there. Uh, you know, everything that we do tries to uh, portray that strength and symbolism that, that we think aligns with the history of our team. And again, our, our team, not me. I don't have a lot of history. That's, that's I, amazing. I'll provide some just for the bottle. I just, I just mm -hmm. want the bottle. I mean, yeah, yeah. So we get that a lot. It's funny. We do tastings all the time, and you know, you'll have two or three empty bottles, and it never fails. I never leave with an empty bottle. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, no. like, hey, can I grab one of those bottles? I'm like, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. that's a piece of history right there. Yeah. So. You know, so the first bottle that you showed. By the way, yes, uh, that was one of our original labels. I think you said your brother bought it for you in Florida. Yeah, my cousin. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. That was one of our original labels. Uh, that label is actually made out of pewter. Our new labels are not because it's we have to machine apply them now. But that one was hand applied by somebody on our team, and that's actually pewter that that uh, wow, uh, you know, flexible enough to stick to the bottle. Yeah, uh, we've gone to like a an aluminum label that's been tinted. In different colors, but okay, that, I love that label. I, I, I really, I, I always enjoy seeing them. Yeah, it's a very, very cool. That's an awesome story about the bottle. That's that's amazing. Cool. That is, and the yeah. juice inside is quite good for being the introductory product. Yeah, uh, it's good. That, yeah. It really does pack a lot of flavor. It, oh yeah, it's not yeah. just a, a cheap forty percent. Uh, you know, it'll Which get. Are you drinking again? Are you drinking the straight? So I'm gonna drink the same one some more just because the premium well, is what we started with now. Barrel strength. We no, started off with the premium. The straight premium, the straight one. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, great, that's a great about about We're extremely proud of that. Um, it, it's a great price point too. I mean, most organizations are retailing that straight in the copper label. Um, they're retailing that one for typically under forty bucks, like thirty nine ninety nine and thirty nine dollars. Oh, wow. Nice, uh, which is fantastic. I think I'll put that head to head with anything in that category. All right, so let's see what we get here. It smells wonderful. I mean, really, and truly, for an eighty-seven, you wouldn't. I don't think I'd pin this at eighty-seven. No, not at all. Even at all, I'd figure it'd be higher, at least in the mid nineties. I was gonna say 92, 94. It smells wonderful, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Brown baking spices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of cinnamon and pepper. A little bit of clove. It's a tobacco leaf. Sugar, yeah. It's definitely a bourbon, corn, and new oak are the dominant uh, grain and uh, and barrel notes. But I get a little bit of the mintiness. You said this was a thirty yeah. percent rye. Yeah, on the so the straight we've got a. Uh, I, some people call it a substantial rye content. We we don't call it a high rye content. I mean, it's just. Uh, it's a matter of preference on how you want to refer to it. But yes, that's the only one of our bourbons that has any rye content to it. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> the other two are both weeded. The bronze yeah. label and the uh, pewter label that you were looking at are both weeded bourbon. This is a straight, you said? Yeah, straight bourbon whiskey. And so can you disclose the age or are we just saying over four? Yeah, it's it, they typically run three to five on that okay. one. Uh, we've pulled our aging... 
statements off of that uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, you're, you're seeing a trend towards that in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, it, it just seems to be where people are moving. Um, as you progress through this and stuff is in the barrel, sometimes stuff is in the barrel longer than you want it to be. Sometimes it's less. It, it really depends. Um, we just have really shot for, I think, a, a consistent product with this one. Um, but they tend to be in that three to five range on the straight. Yeah, that's – it doesn't taste like young whiskey. It's nice. No, it sure doesn't. Well, really it nice. tastes like 30% rye to me or it doesn't smell like 30% rye to me. I'm not getting dill or or mint. No, I taste. Okay. Do you know what kind of rye you guys are using by chance? I don't off the top of my head. Okay. I get a slight pickle on the on the finish, and the mint is about mid palate. I don't know. I really like it. It's really I like cool. it, and you know, I'm not huge on the rye side of things, but it doesn't come out enough for me to be turned yeah, off by the rye. I don't really find it hardly at all. Yeah, and we get that often. You know, again, doing tastings, which is a a lot of uh, of our marketing is really ground level. We're out there all the time. Uh, the whole team. I mean, our team in Florida probably do 500 events this year in total in uh, every other state. We're doing dozens of events every month. Um, we get that quite a bit where people say, I'm not a rye guy. And we just say, try it. They try it. They half the time they end up buying a bottle. Um, ben wants to know, do you know what uh, distributor you, you guys happen to use in Texas by chance? Um, in Texas, I believe it is Republic national. Okay. Oh. Awesome. And um, he also wants to know if there are any events planned for Texas. Um, so the, one of the best places to track our events is on Facebook. Um, we're a bunch of old guys, so we still use Facebook. We haven't uh, moved over to a lot of the other social platforms. So we, we do have Horse Soldier Bourbon on Instagram um, and the same on Facebook. Uh, I, I would just follow that. Uh, we try to add them as far in advance as we can. Uh, at times we don't um have uh, enough notification like you know we'll have a guy on the ground and again as i said we're kind of really ground level on our, a lot of our marketing um we will uh, occasionally slap something up the day before um and i'm pulling i'm going to pull it up right now to see if we have any events in the system for uh texas but if we don't have it in the system now i know we've got multiple things going on in the next uh in the next month, and I'm sure we'll have some stuff going on out there. So I apologize. I'm going to put my glasses oh, on. No big deal. Yeah, and our buddy. I'm old and uh, I'm going blind. <laughs> so I do have one. November 20th, we have a Whitney and War Stories reception at the Palm in San Antonio. Nice. Awesome. Um, our Whiskey and War Stories events are amazing. Um, I'm not sure who's doing that one. I can find out who's doing it. Uh, typically that could be anything from one of the guys sitting in the front of a, a bar, uh, for 20 minutes going through it, or it could be a couple of our guys on stage doing it for 45 minutes to an hour. They literally stand up there. They talk about their experience. I mean, I, I shared as much as I can share with you about our story at the beginning. These guys lived it. So they go through the whole, uh, military background they talk about their careers they talk about some of the combat engagements that they were in the things that they accomplished at the at that level um how they arrived at these on these special forces teams that were the first to go in i mean there are a lot of guys that were in the military but they didn't it, they didn't reach that level and so they talk about that and they talk about how they found out about what was going on at the world trade center and then they kind of roll into going through that whole engagement in Afghanistan, coming out of that, going to other ones. And then they roll into, okay, now we're out. We're getting old. We're getting creaky. What do we do? And they start to tell them talk about, well, we figured out, let's, let's start this bourbon company. And they talk about what it means to them and what it means to their family and what they're trying to build, uh, both from a business perspective, as well as then into the uh, veterans community. You know, part of our mission is to support veterans in any way that we can whether it's by hiring more veterans, whether it's by contributing to charitable organizations, which we do quite a bit of, to everything else. And so the Whiskey and War Stories events, if anybody has an opportunity to go see one of those, I highly recommend it. I really hope one comes up around the DFW area. I was just going to say, Matt, this sounds like an excellent opportunity, sir. 
Yeah, yeah we had uh, Dallas. We were just in Dallas. Um, our right. guys actually did the whiskey and war stories at the Bush Museum. Um, and that was where our launch party was probably uh, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Our time is flying by right now. We're we're all moving a thousand miles a minute. Um, and that congratulations that, was at the Bush Museum was Mark Nutch, Bob Pennington, and Scotty Neal, which is wow. amazing. If you have the opportunity to see any one of those guys do it on their own, it's fantastic. You have the opportunity to see them do it together. It's another world. It's, I'd imagine. Yeah, I've been in rooms with 400 people uh, for 90 minutes, you know, because you get the question and the answers and everything. You don't hear a peep in that room. I bet not. It sounds like a room I'd love to be in. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm it. sure we'll be in Dallas. Uh, uh, no doubt over the next couple of months, we'll have multiple events in Dallas. Awesome. Yeah. yeah like I said, I know, for sure. yeah. they're welcome here anytime. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Let's move on to the signature. What do you want to tell us about the signature? This comes in at 47.5%. Uh, yeah. so this is our small batch. Um, and this is our weeded bourbon as well. So the, the small batch and the barrel strength have similar mash bills. Uh, what we've done with the small batch is we've worked to keep this at a consistent proof of 95. Um, so it's got about 20% wheat content in there. Um, so it's a little bit sweeter. Um, some might describe it as smoother, you know, again, so much of bourbon goes into your own palate uh, mm -hmm. nowadays, but this is our, uh, small batch, uh, again, has about a 20% rye content in it. It's, uh, aged a bit more than our straight, of course. Um, uh, I think it's a, it's a great bourbon, uh, even though my personal favorite is the barrel, uh, this one here, uh, I would say head to head with the barrel. Again, in tastings, we see people kind of, you got five people at the table, you know, one picks the straight, two will pick the small batch, two pick the bur the barrel, and then the next one that kind of flips. So we, yeah. we get a lot of uh, uh, accolades on, on this one as well as the others. I really like the nose on it. It smells no. awesome. What's the age on this one? You said slightly older? Yeah, slightly older. This tends to run above five. Nice. Okay. Wow. That's that smells amazing. Really oily and buttery. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny when you talk about that, you kind of go through the nose on all of these and you'll pick up the characteristics. As we know, different people pick up different things. There's a consistency to a few elements that I think you'll pick up on the nose of that. One of the great things about this as you go and move from the nose to the mouth on this, mm -hmm. as you taste it, you'll get a great mouthfeel to it. Uh, yeah. None of our bourbons are cold, chill filtered, so we don't strip any of the oils or anything out of the bourbons, awesome. which to me really gives you that, I always refer to it like a melted ice cream. It coats your mouth, it sticks with you, it stays there. Um, yeah, very viscous. I, I, I just had a first sip, and it, it's it's rich and just coats your whole mouth. I love absolutely. it. I'm absolutely. still I'm still living in the nose. I'm picking up red berries in here. I'm picking up, uh, you know, the cinnamon and the vanilla and the nutmeg that I'm normally uh, but looking I can for. Definitely but definitely get the sweetness of the wheat. There's that sweetness of the wheat kind of shining through as well. This is this is a beautiful nose. Yeah, I think the, to me the no, the vanilla is forward on both of our weeded bourbons, which uh, I enjoy. That's a personal thing for me. And the legs in this thing are absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, they are. This is beautiful. I get those same red berries across the palate. Mm-hmm. Definitely. There's your whole mouth. You get your normal, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, baking spices and whatnot, but it's very berry forward, and and the wheat sweetness isn't overpowering either. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It has that. It has a little bit of that clove, a little bit of that cinnamon to kind of balance out that wheat sweetness that you're getting in with it as well. Um, yes, yeah. that's yeah, a well balanced whiskey. Um, you said this is ringing in at ninety five. Yep. Yep. We this one we distill at a consistent ninety five. We. We found in the marketplace, you know, that's kind of that sweet sweet spot where people are comfortable with it. When you don't want that barrel strength higher, 110 and above, um, you want a sipper. Uh, it'll still hold up really well in a cocktail. Um, yeah, or over a 95 was the magic number for us. Yeah, I was thinking this would probably hold up pretty well over a big cube for all those big cube drinkers out there. Um, <clears throat> this has enough flavor. It has enough concentration of flavor in it that. If you put this in a cocktail, if you put this on a big cube, 
you're going to have a while with that before uh, this thing starts losing a lot of the flavor out right. of it. Right. Yeah. We yeah. find a lot of times, too, one of the favorite ways to drink it on our team is a drop of water, just a simple drop yeah. of water in there. You know, where you have those oils in it, that, that little drop of water just opens it up quite a bit. Yeah, I got to try that now. Hang on. Well, I mean, you don't have to hang on. You do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, wow. This is really good. This is amazing what you guys are doing. Wow, this is really, really good. I, yeah, you don't even know this is 95. I mean, it's so smooth and just so silky creamy. It's very well rounded. So yeah. good. One of the reasons, you know, you'll notice that number 95, you'll see that it holds up quite a bit in a lot of our marketing, a lot of our uh, product of and all these. You'll see the number 95 quite consistently. And we often do that just to pay tribute to the team. ODA 595. I mean, you could always have done this at. 93 or 94 or 92 we uh we use that as a target we try to incorporate it into a lot of things you'll, you'll see it sometimes in random pieces of our labels and different things like that we try to uh, often pay tribute to that team so so how much does this one run normally so this one has a list price of 59.99 or a suggested okay. retail of 59.99 the first one that you tried has a suggested retail of 45.99 i'm sorry okay. 44.99 um but the first one, the straight, we typically see people selling it at the thirty-nine ninety-nine range, and that was kind of the idea. You know, we we incentivize the market to kind of hit that dollar. You know, to maybe let it fit in with the daily drinker kind of thing. Um, the other two, we realize they go up, but I think the quality of the product in the that's in that bottle really warrants that price point. Oh. Mm. Okay. Delicious. And then the barrel strength, the last one that you guys will end up trying. Yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely pay for this one. Pay that for this one. It's worth yeah, it. It's totally yeah. worth it. Yeah. Yes. The one thing, you know, we're we're also proud of that because of the quality of the product that we're putting in the bottle. Um, you know, the juice is good. Um, it, our, our guys our guys joke about it all the time. They just say, look, they, they realize that people will buy that first bottle because of the story behind the company, the history of the guys that were on the team. You know what they've accomplished people want to get behind them and they'll buy that first bottle and they always joke and they say you know we we just thought if the if the juice doesn't suck they'll buy another bottle <laughs> uh, and they have they have hit that bar for sure um yeah. you know our buy-through rates as a company are uh, impressive really for a young organization we have very high repurchase rates uh both online and our store at the individual level but then at a corporate level you know, our distributors are buying again. Our customers are liquor stores and chains. They're buying them again. And they're telling us that their customers are coming in and, and buying it again. So to us, all the medals that you want to give us, all the ratings that you want to give us, none of that really matters. No. We don't walk in the door. And so we're proud of that, you know, and that, and I can tell you as a leader in the sales organization, that's something we strive for. You know, we can get I, I can go in and talk to anybody and they'll love it. And they'll say, that's great. They want to buy a hundred cases. They buy a hundred cases. That doesn't mean anything to us. Like we literally go into these stores. We do tastings every weekend. We get, we educate their staff. We do the same thing in the restaurants. We get out there. We try it. We're, we're so proud of this product. We put as much of it as we can in people's hands to let them try it, educate the people that are selling it. So that way to us, the sale doesn't really become complete until it goes through somebody's register. Um, yeah. That's what we're most proud of. One bottle being sold in a store is just as valuable to us as 100 cases going into a warehouse in, you know, in Indiana somewhere. Matt. Yes. Did you buy that around here? I bought it at Goody Goody. Right up here? Yeah. The one on 26. Sweet. This is, yeah. Oh. I mean, you get a lot of, you know, whiskeys that are 50, 60 bucks that are craft and they're okay. Oh, they're good. There's a few that are great. This is definitely in the great oh, yeah. uh, category for a young whiskey. Yeah. You said that your guys like drinking this with a drop of water? Yeah. Uh, like uh, Coco, our CEO, that's one of the first things he likes to do. He puts a drop of water in it, uh, so, let it for a minute. It opens up really well. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And that's kind of the way that he prefers to drink it. Me personally, uh, I'm an ice guy. I like to put one ice cube in it, let it sit for a minute. My yeah. wife laughs at me because I hold it up to my nose for 15 minutes. She's like, yeah. you drink that thing? I'm like, I'll get to it. All right. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Very much. Especially on that on the barrel, what you guys are going to next. I, I, I brag about it all the time. It just smells amazing. But 
uh, I think all of them have those characteristics. So. so the reason I think they enjoy putting that drop in is, is that it really does separate all the oils in this. Um, no question. Oh, uh, I really yeah. enjoy putting a drop of water in all of my whiskey for the most part, at least to experiment with it because, uh, you know, you never know until you try. Uh, but this one acts very, very well with the drop. The oils separate very well. The finish elongates and all the flavors actually dial up a little yeah, bit um, without losing the round cohesive journey across your palate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens and you get this spike uh, of flavor, but with this still remains around cohesive journey. Um, but just kind of dials everything up about three or four notches. Yep. I agree. Uh, and we do it again, where I repeat this story all the time that we're at these tastings, but I often keep a small little bottle of spring water with me. Sometimes uh, we'll have a dropper with us just because you're giving them a very small, you know, half ounce that they're tasting. And uh, well, yeah, there you go. Yep. Um, and so they're, they'll, we'll have them taste it without doing that first. Some will like it, some won't. I mean, you know, you can't please everybody, but uh, once you give put that drop in there, it changes it so much. People just uh, are like, wow, they, they don't expect that. Um, you find a lot of people enjoy it that way. I think I put this up against a lot of the big name weeders. I think it'd win. This is really good. I agree. We're winning the battle on the shelf. You know, I, uh, I was telling somebody the other day, you know, you can walk down the aisle of any liquor store. And there's 200 bourbons out there. And, you know, you'd be challenged to find, you know, 10 that you say are, are terrible. There's just some amazing bourbons out there. We love that. Um, we've put ourselves in that market as a young company. We jumped right into that fight with those bourbons. Like I said, we don't stand on this, hey, we're a veteran-owned company. Buy us because of that. That's part of the story. We can't get around that. We, we don't want to get around that. But uh, we would never sell that second bottle if we didn't. So, we, we're we're fighting that battle right on the shelf, and we love being a part of that. We love that there's great product out there. You know, we don't – we just want to be one piece of that puzzle. Well, and I love what you were mentioning earlier about how great the whiskey community is, the distillers uh, in particular, about sharing information and not being um, – Stingy. Stingy about that stuff and not yeah. being competitive about it. It's just – you know, I want you to put your product out there as much as you want me to continue to put my product out there. Absolutely. It's not about a competition. It's about just trying to show you what I have to offer. Yep. Well, look at the, you know, I look at the the cabinet behind you guys and I get it. You guys do this as, as uh, your podcast, but how many houses do you walk into that are just like that, that have 10, 12, 15, 20 bottles of bourbon on the shelf? It depends on what they want to drink. So we get it. We're not going to we're not going to be the only bottle of bourbon on your shelf. We want to be the one that you reach to when you, you know, you're, you're thinking, Hey, I want to try some of that. Uh, we, we get it. Uh, we love that. You've got 20 bottles in there. We just think ours is prettier. So hopefully it's in the front of the cabinet. You know what you would, you would have you definitely would. have a prominent location yes. in my cabinet uh, because of the, the label itself. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, this one this yeah, uh, it's funny. We, when we were rolling out, when we were kind of getting through this, I mentioned, the veteran community in the distilling world, those guys were unbelievably supportive of our team, very helpful, very open. Um, and we still get it. Uh, our CEO was talking today. We were on our call. Uh, we have a Monday call every day. We kind of regroup as our guys are all over the country, really. Um, it was phenomenal because he had received two <laughs> emails from other distillers like, hey, I've been keeping an eye on you guys. You guys are doing great things. Keep up the good work. You know, let us know how we can help you. And that, I mean, we're, you don't see that in other industries. No. no really no. They're crap. I love, I love about, about the whiskey community. It's amazing. Yeah. Before yeah. we move on to this next one, um, one mm -hmm. more quick question. Uh, are you holding on to some old barrels? Do you have some things sitting around that hopefully will have a 10-year release and things like that? Yeah, Come absolutely. Absolutely. So right now we have our <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I'm finishing up a cold here. Um we know the feeling. have our limited edition Commander Select. So last year we did an eight-year old bourbon. This year we have a 12-year-old that's out there. Uh, last year we only did a 1,000 uh, a bottles of it because we were only available in Florida. Mm -hmm. We sold through all 1,000 of those bottles before the holidays, I believe, last year. I see. Uh, this year we did 2,000 because we're in so many different states. Uh, I just found out, I think it was last week, we're down below 500 of those, which is great. Crap. It's a higher end bourbon. Uh, like I said, this year is a 12 year old bourbon. 
it the, comes in a big box. I, I might even have one here. Um, and, and it's got a, our team challenge coin on it. Hold on one second. Let me grab yeah, one of those. Great. Hey, Matt, don't yeah. let this guy uh, hang up before we figure out where one of those is in our area so we can get one. Okay. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk to him when, when it's over. About yeah, that. yeah. We don't need to announce that information. <laughs> this, is, this is this year's release of the Commander Select. Wow. That's all. Um, it opens up. It's in a library box. Oh, cool. It up, it's got, um, in this one, as I mentioned now a couple times, probably, it's a 12-year-old bourbon. It's got a black label with gold highlights on it. Uh, hanging on the neck is one of our team challenge coins. That coin is numbered. Um, That's awesome. You know, the, the gist of that, of what I was trying to say there is, even though these first two releases of, of this product and probably even our next release will not be there. Those aren't our products. Our team goes out, the commander of the horse soldiers, Bob Pennington and Mark, they, they go out into the barrels that we've acquired. Um, and, and, you know, as a young company, we in, intentionally went out to find product that is of value in the market that's aged correctly, that we think that we have respect for. They go out and select those, and I think last year, I don't know what it was, maybe eight barrels. They pull those eight barrels. We pour it into those bottles. So our goal, of course, is three, four, or five years from now to have exactly what you mentioned, mm -hmm. our own 10-year. So we are holding barrels up on the wall that we'll keep just for those reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be our release. As we get into anniversary dates around 9-11 and those kind of things, we want to have special releases for those, too. Um, right now, we just find that uh, the product that we want to put out into the market for these limited release ones, we're better off acquiring another product that's out there. Yeah. Um, you know, we have our own barrel program that's that we're working on now too. Those will be our own products that we have in there. In most cases, um, this year we are using one of our older ones that we acquired. It's a real. We're walking an interesting line because we are still young. Sure. You know, we we don't and we don't try to misrepresent. We, we we talk about it. We say, Hey, it's not our product. We went yeah. out and procured something in the market that we found that was incredibly valuable. And as we found things, even as we were going through the process, we've purchased some other product that we will put up on the wall and may have special releases that we, we never disclose it as anything, but somebody else's product. Well, Where? as long as you're honest about it, I don't think anybody in this industry, or at least not the people that follow our channel, yeah. uh, if you're honest about it, we're happy, man. We're, yeah, we're, all that matters. Exactly. It's a common practice. I mean, our our first rollout into the bottle, uh, we had to acquire some juice just to kind of fulfill that first run. And then sure. our stuff has aged in, and we're putting our own products in the bottles, which is great. So, um, you just had to do it. We were too young. Part of what we pushed some of our, our momentum into the marketplace was pushed early because of the movie 12 Strong. Well, that forced us to release – ahead of our schedule. So we kind of had to scramble a little bit because we wanted to make sure we met the demand. We were like, this is crazy. We can't miss this opportunity. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 For us, though. What's yeah. the name of that documentary you're telling me about earlier so people can go find that, that documentary? Yeah. So the movie that, that was based on the guys is 12 Strong. Um, the documentary, which a lot of the guys on the team will tell you to go watch that before you watch the movie, was Legion of Brothers. And Legion of Brothers was produced by, it's a CNN film, it's a documentary. Scotty Neal, Billy Howell, Mark Nutch, Bob Pennington, uh, I think even Will is in there, who's now joined our team. <coughs> These are the guys that were literally on the ground. There's no actors in this. They talk about it, like close-up discussion about being in hand-to-hand -hand combat situations and all that. It's an amazing documentary. I have, I have recommended it to every friend that I have. I can tell you that. That's awesome. Very nice. Thank you much. So, right. so these um, special bottles, the selects, are they distributed out or are they distillery only or how do those work? No. So uh, they're available in most of the liquor stores that carry us. Some won't put it on there because it is a more expensive product. We sell it for $595 and there's a reason that we do that. And number one, you saw the packaging in it. It oh, is yeah. a 12 year old bourbon. You know, our yield on a 12-year-old bourbon is, I mean, we're lucky if we're getting 130, 135 right. bottles out of a barrel. You just right. don't get their share. Yeah, you just, they, they get a big share of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and one, it, one of the other things is, even though there is more profit, let's say, in a bottle like that, we don't take it. Uh, we, we take some of it. We're a for-profit company. 
but we utilize a lot of that for other issues. The statue, as I was mentioning, that's on the front of our bottle that resides at Ground Zero, we help to maintain that statue. So we contribute to that. Uh, we support that. Um, the support of what we do in veterans groups, we don't mention them all. We don't want to mention them all. But I can tell you there are a handful that we support quite regularly. The uh, Warrior Sailing Program down in Florida, our guys sail with them all the time. Um, we've, you know, I think one of their boats has a horse soldier sail on it. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's something that, again, as I came into this not being uh, military, uh, I, I was the token civilian on the team. Uh, that's what I fell in love with. I saw what they were doing with them. I, I saw what they were doing with Healing Waters. Um, when a, when a, uh, a veterans-based organization or even some of the other charities that aren't necessarily just veterans-based will come to us, I mean, we can't write a check to every one of them. We know that. We're, we're too small. We're too young. Uh, we can donate a bottle or two. Um, and when we do that and our guys take the time to sign it, organizations will raffle those off or auction those off and raise five, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. I was at an event where Scotty Neal presented a bottle and it was signed by Mark and Bob and him. And uh, that bottle gathered $14,000. Nice. Oh, wow. You know, you've got a room full of people that they know they're writing a check, but when they hear that story, they see Scotty up there doing his whiskey and war stories. You see Mark up there doing it. They know that it's signed by them. Uh, they, they'll they write a big check for it. So for us, it's a way that we can contribute without writing a big check ourselves, which we just, again, as a small company, can't afford to do. Um, I oh, think last yeah. year by utilizing those bottles, uh, right. we were able to help uh, veterans organizations raise somewhere in the ballpark of about four hundred to $450,000. That's awesome. I yeah. absolutely love everything that I am hearing coming out of your mouth. Yeah, and I mean, even the price tag. I wish my wife said the same thing. She doesn't know. Like <laughs> Probably completely different conversations. <laughs> She's asleep now, so I can say that. You're not, you're not always sweet talking her with whiskey like you are this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I just there's plenty, of, there's plenty of whiskey in the garage. She doesn't even drink it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to your reserve barrel strength whiskey. This particular one comes at 57.1 per, uh, 57%, so 114. Yeah, you got a you got a high proof about there. That. We we tend to run those around 110 to 115. Uh, 114 is really the highest one that I've seen in my market here. In uh, I haven't seen any 115s yet, um, but I know they're out there. <clears throat> um, this is a true barrel strength. Um, we don't do anything to it. We run it through a light filter. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't add any water. We don't add any color, sugar, flavor, none of those things. Um, it literally is coming out of that barrel. Uh, you're getting all that powerful flavor of the barrel. Uh, one of my favorite things, as I was joking about before, is just the nose on this thing. It immediately yeah. triggers everything going on in your mouth and says something nice is about to happen. Um, mouth starts watering almost instantly. Absolutely, yeah. You're getting the vanilla in there. At least I do, again. Uh some refer to it as butterscotch. Uh, I've heard caramel. You get some apple in there. there. There's a lot of different characteristics that you'll find in that thing. Um, you know, I just think it's one of the best things that you can put up to your nose. And I have smelled a lot of alcohol in my life. <laughs> this is burnt caramel, uh, creme brulee. Oh, yeah. Um, Lots of apples and fruit. I was just saying Lots that vanilla. It's a vanilla custard. An apple. Yeah. For me, the vanilla is what I get that's that's on the front. And that's probably why, it, it, for, from my perspective, this is my personal favorite. When I go grab a drink of it and I pour it over, I, this is what I what I like to drink. And a lot of times I'll put it in the glass. I won't put the ice in there right away because I just love the smell of it. Take a couple sips of it, then drop that ice in there. Let it sit for a minute while I'm sitting out on the deck. Have a cigar with it and uh, thoroughly enjoy it. Um, you know, we're using... As you guys know, the majority of your flavor, 75% plus of the flavor, comes from the barrel. Mm -hmm. We use top quality barrel, again, new American oak, of course. We have high char level. We do a char level four. Mm -hmm. in our barrels. So you're pulling a lot of that out of there. You oh, can yeah. see that in the color and in the flavor of this. Um, one of the things that we do as an organization, too, we use a larger barrel. Um, we use the 53-gallon barrel, which gives you much more surface. Mm -hmm. um and so more of the bourbon is touching more of the barrel 
So you're really pulling more of that flavor out of it. Um, something we're proud of, just something that we didn't have to do. We just thought about, hey, if we're going to get a better product out of this, let's not cut any corners anywhere. And we just, as an organization, uh, coming into it after that initial sort of phase before we rolled product out, um, I don't know how they did it. They really did not cut any corners, and it shows in what they have right now. So they're, um, they're very proud of that. They're putting this into the barrel, I think, at a really good proof as well. Do, can you speak to what proof they're putting this into the barrel at? Um, or what it no, runs I, out? That has, been, that has been said to me. Tyler has told me what it goes in at, and I'll be damned if I can't think of it. It um, doesn't taste like it went in at a really high proof. This tastes like it went in at a relatively low proof for bourbon. Um, and honestly, it coming back out, like you said, between 110 and 114, for the most part, kind of says that as well. Yeah. Uh, but you're pulling out a lot more of the wood sugars instead of the wood tannins at a lower right. proof. And that really comes through on the palate. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like you were saying that they made really good selections. They made really good choices. Um early on, which is helping now because yeah. this is a glorious, glorious glass of whiskey. Yeah. This well, again, we go back to the mouthfeel. We're not stripping yeah. any of those oils out. And that smell, when your mouth starts to water, you're like, wow, something's good about that. Something good is about to happen. Then when you put that in your mouth, it hangs out in there for a while. It is, it's wrapping your tongue. You're, you're feeling it even on the, your cheeks. You, the flavor stays there with you. And I, I've said it before, and it's a term that I like to use. You get that nose to it, um, and I'll be damned if it, it doesn't lie to you. It's you know there are a lot of bourbons out there. You smell them, and you think, oh, I pick up on this, I pick up on that. And when you drink it, you're not quite getting all of that, or you're getting something different. When you smell that vanilla, or if that's what you're picking up, if you're it it it, it tastes the exact same way as it smells, in my opinion. Oh yeah, I get exactly what he was saying. The the kind of vanilla y like creme brulee mm -hmm. type, but then about Halfway back to the back of my palate, um, on the finish, I get like an apple pie. Yeah. And, and yeah. this this is definitely by far my favorite of the three. Ooh. I I am a high proof drinker, yeah. and and so this is right in my wheelhouse. I really enjoy this. Yeah, I'm right there with you. If I'm gonna sit and have one uh, on the deck, that's typically what I go for. When I'm making a cocktail, uh, I've got friends over and I'm mixing up a batch of mules or something like that i definitely go for the straight but this one is the one that i enjoy this is special that's for what sure is this one running uh cost wise is that what you're saying 80 yeah. 79.99 for that one okay and okay. one of the things that we're also seeing is that you know people i think uh, don't feel like uh they're they're getting anything but value for the money because we're not seeing the prices in the market get driven down people are staying consistent with what we're suggesting for price um we know in the liquor business there's a battle all the time and there's always something on sale and there's always somebody that can sell it to you for a dollar or less we don't really engage in that uh certainly where it's avoidable even though at the ground level with the store owners we don't have control over that uh we check on it we try to make sure that we're doing our job which means that the price isn't being driven down so we've got good quality we're getting it in right people's hands we're letting people try it um it, it it's again just one of those other elements that we're very proud of. I like it. I like it a lot. It's really really good. Yes. Yeah. yeah, David said that he got it for sixty nine ninety five in Indiana. Dang, you got a good deal. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of chains. There's one chain here that that discounts. I think all three of them. Nice. We'll pick all three up then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now you can try them all. So well, I, did, I saw on the show that, that aren't in one of the states that we're for sale at. Uh, they can get it online, coursesoldier.com. Okay. We work with a third party um, because we can't, as a distillery, we can't sell directly to a consumer. Mm -hmm. When you link onto our page, onto our shop, uh, it goes direct to a third party. We have a fulfillment company uh, that that sells it, um, and we're happy to. I think we put in a code for you guys as well, yeah. Matt. Uh, so your people can use the code uh, WC for Whiskey Crusaders 2019, and that'll get anybody that wants to order it 10% off. Yeah, that's awesome. They order three bottles with no shipping. Under, so. That's fantastic. Oh, I, this is my favorite. This is just delicious. 
How, now it's the same mash bill. Is it? What's the age difference from the, on this one? Or is it the same age, just to, just barrel proof as the uh, small batch? Small batch. They're yeah. the same, similar aging on it. The the small batch. We pull a select number of barrels. I think I'm trying to remember what the number was. I want to say that it was either seven or ten barrels at a time, and pull those together. And then again, we go. We move those to a consistent proof of ninety five. Um, then on the barrel strength, we just run it out pure. I mean, we, we literally run that through like a coffee filter, pull all the particles out of yep. it, and that's it. We don't touch it with anything. Barrel char, that's really all you're looking for. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, can I interrupt real fast? Um, what is the webpage again, please? Horsesoldierbourbon.com. There you go. And we'll make sure that's in the description and stuff too. Sir, yeah, no uh, code uh, in the live chat. For those that are watching and not paying attention, um, we just want, I wanted to set something up. And after when I was talking to Matt earlier, I had uh, my guy set it up on the store for you. Um, we'd love to let you guys try it that are that are not in markets that were for sale. And of course, if we're in a market that we're for sale, and we'd love for you to go to a retailer that helps us. Um, if your retailer doesn't have it, ask for it. You go into a bar, ask for it. That's what helps us at that at that guerrilla marketing aspect of things. Right. Spread uh, that. We don't know that we're out in the market yet. We're still young. I mean, even in Indiana, which right now I have responsibility for, I'm, I'm rolling it out there. You know, there's north of 6,000 licenses in the state of Indiana. If we're in 500 of them, I'd be surprised. And we are fighting that battle every day. So uh, we always have room to grow. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think you guys are going to grow a lot. You guys are putting on an amazing product. Um, do you guys disclose what just so you guys are doing your um – I guess your co-op with at the moment or not? Yeah, we work at our Columbus, our Middle West. Okay, Middle West spirits. Okay, awesome. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> they do a great job with us. It's not, you know, when you when you list on there that we distill in Columbus, Ohio, it wouldn't be too hard to figure it out. Uh, Ryan and his team there, Ryan's the master distiller there. Those guys are awesome. They have done just amazing things for us. Uh, we're very loyal to them. Uh, we love working with them. Uh, they taught us a lot, you know, as a team. And they're still teaching us. You know, when we go up there, and even though uh, Tyler may be on top of the still and he's working it, uh, they're there over our shoulder to help us. Um, you know, they do some of their own products, which are really good, too. Right. They their Ohio line, which they're proud of. I've tried a few of their other ones. I tried their gin not too long ago. I really like that. I thought they did a good job with that. Um, so... I don't know that we could ask for a better arrangement with them. Um, oh, yeah. you know, we were rolling out and we were only available in Florida for that first year. Mm. Uh, logically, financially, all those other things from a business perspective didn't make any sense for us to open up a distillery or, sure. you know, buy a distillery, you know, that 12, $15 million investment just puts you so far behind the, the line. Yeah, absolutely. We would have had a lot of ground to make up now that we know where we're at. Um, you know, the next couple of years will determine where we go from there. Yeah, because I know I've had that distilled before, a couple of things. And I've tried their, I guess, with their bourbon. And I guess there was a pumpernickel one that uh, Jason, the mass and drum, was in our chat currently. He gave me that one, too. That yeah. was very interesting. Yeah. But I, I prefer this greatly. <laughs> Over the yeah, I've, well, the only ones that I've had of theirs is their um, uh, gin. When I went to the distillery one day, the one of the people let me try one of theirs because we're not even for sale in Ohio, which is kind of funny. People always laugh. They're like, "Oh, crazy!" Go it there, but I can't buy it there. So now you, you can't even buy it at the distillery either. There, uh, when you're not available in the state of Ohio, you're just not available. Uh, okay, you know, there's, there's crazy liquor laws that oh, vary. Right. Right. They control state. Yeah, our lovely three tier yeah. system. Oh, that blows. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll get you in the market there sooner than later. That's for sure. So what's the yeah. next dates after you guys have launched and now where are you planning to go to next? Well, we've got on the list, we've got five states that we're working through right now. Okay. Um, we'll probably be disclosing those in the next 30 days. Um, I think the reality of why we're not disclosing them today is that uh, there's probably 10 on that list and we're trying to figure out some of those. Um, we partner with, uh, we work with Foley Fine Wines, which helps us. They're an agency of ours, or an we have an agency agreement with them. <coughs> so they help us from a national distribution perspective. Okay. Uh, they carry our bottles in their bag, which is phenomenal. Again, as a small company, 
to hire salespeople in every state uh, kind of kills you. Those guys have huge cloud in the market. And so they're helping us to expand into other states, which is awesome. And they just have, they have such good quality product and well-trained salespeople and all that. Uh, it's just a smart way for us to expand right now. Um, I think you'll, you know, some of the obvious ones are out there, you know, being in Texas and California, Florida, New York, those are the big ones, you know, your top five states, you can probably pretty easily target the next five. I will tell you, one of them is Kansas. Uh, okay. Because Bill, uh, Mark Nutch is, he's from Kansas. Oh, okay. He speaks in Kansas probably three times a month. And awesome. so we constantly get hammered, like, when are you bringing it to Kansas? When are you bring it to Kansas? And so Mark's been whining a lot about when can we sell in my state? And uh, so we got him. Uh, I think he's going to be one of the one of the first ones, probably first quarter of next year. Awesome. Yeah. For the people in Kansas will be thrilled. I know our, our buddies, uh, Scott and Bart, the Scotch Chess Dummies are up there. I'm sure they'll also be thrilled. Yeah. They're both police officers. And so I'm sure they'll be thrilled to have some. Yeah. Some and the state, like you said, the state just loves Mark, as they should. Yeah, for sure. I can't imagine why not. <laughs> I don't give him a hard time, but, um, you know, he's proud to be from there and, and he wants to have our products there. It should be. I mean, these are great products. I mean, I am blown away how awesome these are. It's great. This is, I love to hear it. That means a lot to us. Yeah, definitely. I'm like, and we're always honest with this. This this is great whiskey. I'm I can't say enough good things about this. Anybody can find us. I would definitely mm-hmm. buy all three to try them all. And then I think you're gonna buy it again because I'm always gonna have a bottle of this for sure. And this one is probably always on my bar because it's signed, so that'll always be on the bar forever. But yeah, we'll be drinking these yeah. and I'm sure many more of these because these are awesome. Yeah. And just like we talked about, you know, the whiskey and war stories that's coming up in Texas. We'll have tastings. Our distributors there will be hosting tastings too. Okay. Take the time, you know, take a sign up on the Facebook page, watch the events. Um, I, I'm working on some emails to go out to our general subscription list. Okay. Um, you know, keep an eye on those things. Uh, that gives you typically in our tastings, especially early stage ones, we mm-hmm. will taste all three. Oh. Um, we don't. We don't often taste Commander Select. Uh, yeah, I kind of figured not that one. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, can't, I have to admit, I may have broken a label or two on there, so I had to open the bottle, but <laughs> you know, don't, don't tell the boss. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, we actually um, host a lot of distilleries here as well. So okay. if you guys ever want to have a, an event with us, we're more than happy to host you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking. I was this. These guys sound right up our alley for the events that we throw, the events that you throw. Yes. We get help. This is incredible, though. I, I can't say enough good things about how good this is just mind blowing good. That's great. I mean, I yeah, I really would. I'd love to put this up against some of the other ones. I think this would probably win. I especially with the difference I find yours is the other ones you get the nice sweet, but this has the nice oiliness I really like. And it's, it's I think it's, it's uncut. I think that and it's non shell filter makes such a big difference. Yes. I think those are some of our competitive differentiators, as I'll call it. What are you doing? Mm, I love this. I, this this could get me in trouble though, because this is really good. <laughs> and I mean, it's 114. It doesn't taste 114. It, it this could be quite dangerous, and it's really, really good. Yeah, that's one of the things we get all the time too at the tastings. You know, people will try that one. They'll ask me what what's your favorite one, and I, you know, of course they say I like them all, but this is the one that I would pick. Um, and they'll try it, and they'll go through the other ones, and then you. They say, well, what's the proof on that? And usually my bottle is 111, 112, whatever I have that I pulled, and they just shake their head. They go, that's 111, that's 112. They're like, why is it so smooth? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? It's smooth. It was a good <laughs> barrel. It was a good barrel. Really good job. Yeah, yeah the cast drink, definitely. I like it a lot. Yeah. I have that there's a sweet spot uh, in that 110 100 to 120 range that – the right barrel, uh, without any water added, can taste like a 100. Can taste like a a, a bottle and bond. It just doesn't. It doesn't have that ridiculously high proof spike that it seems slap like. Slap you it in the face. <laughs> then slap yeah. you in the face. No. Yeah. And it surprises me. I mean, again, as somebody who came into this not being from the bourbon world, mm. um, when you taste this uh, beside the small batch, even though they're so similar, uh, there is a distinct difference in taste by just adding that water, um, which, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to see how they do differ. 
I gotta drink some more and add some water down to this barrel <laughs> drink because for science, it's very good. And it's really good, so why not? It's yeah, wow, well, yeah. It's only made a point. There's not that many non-chill filtered weeded bourbons out there to begin with, so uh -huh. this is another nice addition to the marketplace in general. So it's it's really quite unique to see that. Yep. Oops. Right we knew what we were going for. We knew where the mark that we wanted to hit, and I I believe we hit it and exceeded it. Yeah. Be beyond exceeded my expectations about I, I can't believe how good this is. Yeah, this is amazing. They're all you know, the neat thing is they're all award winners too. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we even though I mentioned early on that the uh, straight won double gold out in San Francisco earlier this year, both the small batch and the barrel strength have won awards as well. They weren't the uh, they're not double gold, but uh in one competition, you know, I think the two that we got most recently were New York again, and then San Francisco. In right. one uh, small batch, may have gotten gold. The other one got silver, and then the other one, I think, one got silver. And the, the you know they flip flopped. Sure. Um, you know, it, uh, one got bronze in one competition too. So we're really getting recognized for the product that we're putting in the market. Uh, even the Commander Select, I think, in the Commander Select, in one of them, we got a double gold. Um, you know, that's impressive because everybody's got to give you a, a unanimous vote on the quality of your product. So. Sure. Now, is the commander is that one the same mash bill as well? Is that a weeded one as well? No, just a high corn. There's no no weed in the commander. No weed in the commander. <clears throat> so same mash bill then as your uh, as your straight then, or different mash bill completely? Different mash bill. Different mash bill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now sourced from the same place or different place on that one? Different place. Different place. Okay. Mm -hmm. We yeah. just again we go out and and. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, procure special barrels that we, mm. uh, we do a lot of work in trying to find. Okay. Uh, we don't, we don't disclose where those come from, but we do a lot of work on them. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll have to get our guys to track one down here for sure. Cause yeah, we got to get one. Cause I can't, if this is as good as it, I can't even imagine how good that one must be. Uh, I'll tell you when, when I do accidentally break the label on one, uh, everybody loves it. Uh, you know, our, our distributor reps, uh, at Southern, just they rave about it, which is great, you know, because they get a, they all have tried sample bottles on it. When sure. you get guys like that that you know have whatever 20, 30 bourbons in their bag, yeah, um, and they're telling you how good yours is, uh, hopefully they're not just blowing smoke, but uh, uh, we're proud of it. Yeah, you should be. You're making a damn good whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, this is this has got to be one of the best new bourbons I've had in the market in quite some time, to be real honest. I mean, we like our Texas stuff a lot. Um, so this is from Ohio. This is really great whiskey. I mean, I haven't a lot from Ohio, but yeah, this I think to stand up against anything in Kentucky, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. This well, is it's interesting, you know, in the market right now, there's some great bourbons coming from all over the place. You know, we'll get that question occasionally, like, oh, well, you're not from Kentucky, you know, or you're not from here, and it's just you know. Just like you guys are doing, we, our response isn't to argue with them at all. Right. Uh, it's try it. Like, give yeah. it, a, you know, put some in a glass and drink it. Exactly. Don't like it. Okay, sorry, but I, we don't get that response. Even the guys that are hardcore and they want to try to tell you, you know, I know my bourbon and it has to be this way. Okay, I'm not going to argue that with you. Every Not everybody in the country is going to buy a bottle from us. True. But I think ours stands up really well against the majority of the product that's out there. And that's not knocking anybody else. It's just our goal. That's where we want to sure. be. Sure. It's a good goal. I think oh. you're far exceeding it. <clears throat> so can I ask without, since I haven't actually seen a bottle or, you know, looked at a bottle, does the story about everything that's going on with the bottle on the bottle someplace? Or no, you it, 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 there's not a, on the back, you, you don't have a lot of room typically on there. You have a lot of sort of government requirement. Uh, right, right. On there. There is a bit of, of information in the on the story of the team. Um, if you look on our website, you can see right. some of our bottles are on there. Um, it, okay. it really talked about you know kind of the the story behind our group. Um, I don't think anything is actually mentioned on here about the bottles coming from Trade Center Steel. Okay, so so those who purchase these, give them as a gift because I think that would be an, an awesome thing to give somebody that is a veteran or even currently in service. Oh, um, yeah. um, huh? I've just had a thought in my mind, like how fun would it be to show up with a bottle, a cocktail bottle, 
like what y'all were doing last night on the oh. on the whiskey <laughs> women's thing. Sorry, go ahead. But to make sure that if you're you're giving this bottle to somebody to to tell them to look up to find out the history on the actual bottle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think once we have a lot of people, we have a little card that kind of tells the story about it that uh, we'll have up on our website eventually that people can download with it. Uh, we get that request all the time. People say, "Hey, I just ordered a bottle of your." Your bourbon, I'm giving it to my uncle who was a, a ranger. I'd love to tell him the story. We point people, there, a, a lot of the information on our company, uh, there's a great video in on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's called The Journey. It's phenomenal. It talks, you know, all the guys are interviewed. Coco, one of the founders, the CEO, he talks about the passion behind this, all of that. So uh, that take a look at that video. If you give a bottle to somebody, send them an email with that link to the video. It's great. We also will have some literature that you can have. You, have you thought about maybe putting, uh, you said that hanging from the neck of the bottle was a challenge coin on some of these. Have yeah. you thought about putting a card hanging from the neck of the bottle on some of these others that just has one of those scannable codes that le links you to that video? Yeah. So we have a, a neck hanger um, yeah. that is just a black and gold neck hanger. It opens up and on the, on the front uh, or on the top and bottom of the inside card, it has the story as much as we can put in that, you know, whatever, 140 character world. Right. Uh, it has much more of the story to it. We have not used sort of the the, the codes. We have one on our bottles. Um, we don't we don't utilize them much. I think I'm trying to remember where that one drives you to, but we're actually working, we're looking at this other company that we're talking to that uh, when you just simply, uh, what do they call it? augmented reality? So just by taking a picture of the bottle, we'll draw information to you. Um, and so hopefully next year we'll have more of that information out there as well. Very awesome. excellent. Because I really think that you know the story of this. If people don't know, or even the bottle itself, and it, it needs to just get out there. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you guys are doing great things. We try. We we push it hard. Yeah. Andy does a bottle, so that's awesome. Yeah. One of the things too you you mentioned. Uh, you know, giving it a gift for somebody on our website, we do have a, what we call a sip and save pack mm. where they can purchase a bottle of our uh, barrel strength. And then it comes with our, our signature, which is the bronze label. Um, but it comes with our original paper label on it. Um, and our guys, when they went into Normandy, so a couple of months ago, uh, our team went into Normandy to jump for the 75th anniversary. Awesome. They were the lead plane into the jump zone. Um, they brought in some Gold Star moms. They brought in some old World War II veterans. They had some other eras with them, Vietnam veterans and Korean veterans that went in with them, and our team jumped in with them. They brought in a handful of bottles. Um, they So they jumped them into Normandy. Uh, that bottle had our old paper label on it. And so we had a pallet of those and our guys actually went and signed them all and put them on the website because they were using the money that we raised from that to help bring some of those other people onto the trip with our team. That's so cool. Um, wow. And if you go online, there's a sip and save pack that mm -hmm. has both. It has our barrel and it has a signed bottle. And I think each bottle is signed by at least one of our guys and some of them are signed by two guys. That's freaking So that's a great way to give somebody a gift. Where they understand the story behind it. Yeah. Silly Texas. Yeah, we can't order things in Texas. But Jason uh, was saying that Jason from Mash and Drum was saying he needed to order a bottle. I hope he heard that last part too. I don't think though. See, originally we were restricted in Texas. I'm going to look here. For some reason, I think we can. Let me just look here on our. You'd be the only one. Um, but real. I sure hope. I hope you're right. I really do. I'll order a bottle from your website right now. Uh, yeah, let me go in there. You know, and again, because we use that third party, we don't control any of that. Um, yeah. They, you know, they ship other spirits. They ship wine as well. And I think wine is always easier than. Sure. Uh, yeah, you birth. can ship wine into Texas. You can't ship whiskey yet. Doesn't seem fair. It. No, it's, it's, not fair. it's really not. It's not that it doesn't seem fair. It's not fair. Um, um, wrapping things up, uh, Brian. We got about another uh, eight minutes or so before. We're going to call things. Um, all of the stories that you've told just make me, every single story you've told, it just makes me want to buy a bottle of this more and more. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like this has been a really great live stream. Um, 
I feel like that your company is putting out really fantastic products. So thank you. Um, I'm I'm happy to be drinking this tonight. I'm happy to be talking with you tonight. So oh, yeah. I just wanted to take a moment to say cheers to you. Uh and and thank you for being on and thank you for uh yeah, sharing this sharing the stories. Thank you very much. I, I have to say, you know, as a team, uh we appreciate those words. You know, I, I don't care if it's one person sitting in a room or three hundred people in a room that we're presenting to. When we get that feedback, that means more to us than anything because you know it, like I said before, we're a for-profit business. We're in this. We're entrepreneurs. We're trying to build something. But the fact that what we're putting out is getting accolades from people like you guys who know your product, uh, who know the market, who know good bourbon, that, uh, I mean, I don't care if we sell a thousand cases. It's hearing that just makes us believe in what we did. And so thank you guys very much. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys are on girl. I mean, like you said, it's enough alone to support you guys because it's a veteran company. But right. the fact it's also an amazing product. Like, oh, man, yeah. I, this is going to be on the, I'm always going to have a bottle. This stuff is amazing. Yeah. I, I can't say enough good things about you guys coming. All the awesome stories you told us tonight are just all the more reason to buy a bottle. But yeah. to keep buying the bottle because it's really good whiskey on top of that. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. A lot of it I'm, I'm parroting because I've heard it from the guys a hundred times. But, um, you know, I, I've been in the room with them now for, uh, like I said, close to two years. And there's no place else I would rather be. I've, worked in software. I've worked in startups for a lot of other industries. Um, I, I, I enjoy what I'm doing right now, probably more than anything I ever had. Uh, part of it is those guys. You know, I, I, like I said, I didn't come into this just being a bourbon guy and being like, Oh, I, I can't wait till I sell bourbon. I love it now. Um, but I love the, that this team more and, uh, being a part of it is, uh, means the world to me right now. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, I can't say enough good things. I just me neither. I'm I, like I'm really blown away by, like I said, how good it is and the stories and this 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 is like probably one of our, my favorite live streams we've done. This thank just, you very much, man. That, that's awesome. We, I, I agree with that and everything else. I mean, the juice in the bottle is good, but the things that you are doing for the veterans in this country is even better. Yeah, yeah I, I think knowing this team, that's just second nature for them. It's just Part of it, they've all been there. Scotty Neal, who, like I said, who's one of our founders, ran the Green Beret Foundation uh, before he came on board with us. Um, so it it it's important to them to be a part of it. You know, we as everybody on this team, we don't have to ask to support the right cause. It's just, we know that you know everybody's going to say yes and everybody's going to get behind it. You guys are making me feel good. I'm going to have to send you a t-shirt or something. <laughs> well, you're a natural on camera. You're doing yeah. quite well today, Brian. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's my head is huge, so I've tried to keep it as far back as I can. <laughs> I was that kid that uh, when I was playing football, had the had the largest helmet. I still have to find a large baseball hat. So um, <laughs> thank you guys for that compliment. <laughs> what was the price? a different camera. I'll sit back here. What was the price difference one more time between um, – the signature and the reserve because i just did a side by side and i just kind of want to know in my head yeah so we go uh, again the straight has a retail of 49.90 44.99 the small batch is 59.99 and the barrel strength is uh, 79.99 um and okay. again we, we often see the smaller i mean the straight uh, go for typically around 40 which is really a goal of ours we wanted to see it hit that price point yeah the, the other two they kind of hover around that point some of the Grocery chains that will put us in sell it a bit above that, but as your gentleman noted in, in Indiana, uh, he found it cheaper than that. I'm pretty sure I know exactly where he found it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's a so at the goody goody near us, uh, it's 65 and 75 uh, for the small batch and the barrel proof, uh, oh, wow. barrel strength. I say spend the extra ten dollars, oh, yeah, people in definitely. the chat. Yeah, um, the small batch is really good, yeah. But if you're gonna spend sixty five, I say spend seventy five and get the barrel strength. It really is a step up, and it's a significant step up beyond that ten dollars. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm the sales guy in the organization, I say buy them both. But yeah, exactly. Uh, that's yeah. I bought all three. So. That's fair. Uh, but buy them all. If you're only going to purchase one of the two, um, spend the extra ten. Spend the extra twenty. Uh, it really is worth it for the barrel. Uh, for the reserve, it really, um, it's a, it's a
It's a glorious whiskey. It's it's really really fantastic. Probably one of my top five bourbons that I've tried this year. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. yeah. This is gonna go in our probably best new bourbons of the year for sure. As far as like things that I've tried this year, and I and I'm putting that up against some some heavy freaking hitters. Yeah, for real. Um, yeah, you're you're on my list with like Iron Root, Igor, and 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 things like that. This is a, a very very well chosen barrel. Uh, I hope that everybody's barrel is as good as this one was. Yeah, and and like Jason says, uh, the mash and drum. You know, you're getting some bourbon and you're supporting veterans. Um, it's a no brainer. So yeah. get Thank yourself you a bottle. Yeah, we're, we we're we're outpacing some big names in in the market. Uh, I'm not surprised. Proud, because um, we, we look. If nothing else, we're all competitive guys, and we want to win. Um, and so when we hear that we outpaced somebody that's been in the market for a while, that means a lot to us. That means we're doing our job, not only putting good juice in the bottle, but putting it in people's hands. So absolutely. Yeah, and if you live in. Um our area over here, don't go to Goody Goody. They don't have any. You bring up a good point in the early stage of launch for us. Um, we're we're going to start adding to our website. Right now, we don't have it all updated, but we will start adding where it's available. But if you find somebody like Goody Goody or somebody like that, that is listing it on their website, I would definitely check um, because people are moving it very quickly. Um, so I would always call before driving over there. Um, oh, yeah. And then what I would extend to you guys, too, let's stay in touch. Um, when I know the guys are going to be in Texas, I'd love to line them up with you, maybe you know, have them come in for a little face-to-face -face time with you guys. Or if you're doing an event, uh, you know, maybe have them speak to your group out there. Um, uh, you know, any they were welcome anytime. Whatever they they're here, we'll make it available. Whatever night they need it to be, we'll be available for them no matter what. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. That would be that would be an amazing amazing night. Yeah, it doesn't matter what night it is. We'll we'll, we'll drop everything to be available for them for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, open invitation here permanently. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> if there's anything I can help you guys with, by all means, reach out. And let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Um. So some of the guys, some of our fans are up in Canada. Any plans to go to Canada anytime soon? You know, we've got. Uh, we always get the inquiry on the international side. Um, I know that we've had some discussion with a couple of people up into that market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to be careful with growth. We're still a small sure. team. You know, when I came on board, uh, I was the seventh person sitting around the table, yeah. and now we've got you know fifteen or sixteen. So we're right. conscious about our growth. We're we're trying to structure it correctly without hurting ourselves. We don't want to go too fast. But I know we have had discussions with a couple of people up okay. in that market about bringing in even limited quantities. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're in great shape. We have a lot of or a lot of product in the barrel. So we don't yeah. see ourselves going into allocation at any point. Um, you never know what happens five years from now, but um, I think uh, at our pace, uh, we've accelerated what we're putting in the barrel too. So mm -hmm. I think we're, we're great. I mean, we've got thousands of barrels on the wall and all that stuff. So, uh, we're, we'll be in good shape. I, I wish I had an answer for that. Um, not because I'm not sharing one. We just don't have one yet. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. Your young company is there. That's what matters. Yeah. yeah. They might get it someday. We, we, they can, we can only hope for their sake. And yeah, if not, I'm sure we can always have someone comes down from Canada to America and bring it back. Yeah. 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 Well, not, the, not the cheapest way, but it'll get the job done. Well, we can, you know, as as you watch our follow our social media and our website, subscribe on our emails. As we get updates like that, uh, we're unbelievably open. We we want to share that uh, because we think of the people that are, you know, following us that are supporting us. They're part of our team. You know, they're part of the army for us. So yeah, definitely. Oh, David just bought a bottle. So yeah, David just bought a bottle. <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. <clears throat> wow, this is. I'm proud great. of you guys. Good job, chat. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, you guys want to learn more about the individuals on the team, go check out that uh, documentary, Legion of Brothers. You know, the movie 12 Strong is good. Um, you know, is it a, it's, it's a Hollywood movie, so I don't know how accurate it is. Uh, those guys will tell you parts of it are. I know Mark and Bob didn't really consult on the movie much, but um, it's entertaining. I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, it is. Legion of Brothers really tells the story about 
the guys that are on our team, Scott, uh, Mark, Bob, all those guys. Um, so take a few minutes and download that and, and watch that. That's worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah. Well, Mark definitely. Was on Cavuto on the Fox Business Channel. They were talking about veteran businesses and mm. so Mark Rich was on there today. There's a you can get the download off of our Facebook page on that too. So. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Yeah. Check it out too. What is else do you want to talk about your company? I was going to say, Brian, is there anything else that you want to pitch or talk about uh, any upcoming events or things that you need to mention uh, before we get off the air? Not really. Um, you know, it, I wish I could tell you that there were specific things in those markets. I know we have that event in San Antonio in Texas. Um, I know we've got more stuff on the, on the calendar. Uh, it hasn't quite hit the event schedule yet. Uh, keep an eye on that. We, that, that's how we're, we're winning the battle is that our guys are out there. Um, and so it gives you a chance to meet them. You know, you're not meeting Jack and Johnny at the table. You're meeting, you know, Scott and Bob and uh, Mark. And so those are great events to go to. Um, I, I've seen, I, I don't know how many times I've seen all these guys speak and I still sit with chills watching. Them. So to get that opportunity, definitely go out and see them, meet them, get a signed bottle from them. I've got all of them to sign my own bottles and I put them up on the bar. So um, we're doing, you know, in the markets that we're in, like Indiana, we've got a couple of holiday sales coming up with our chains. We're doing an event at the historical society on Thursday. Um, I know in California, we've got a multi a number of events like that. Virginia we were launched in Virginia. Kevin, who's pushing that state has got a number of events coming up, tastings at different restaurants. Just keep an eye out. Uh, we'd love for you to get out there and try it, get get it in your hands. You know, spreading the word with groups like you guys definitely uh, that's invaluable to us. Um, we are chasing the American dream, and well, uh, y'all are, are making great decisions. So oh, yeah, we love the support. Um, like I said, we're doing hundreds of events, and uh, you know, my wife will tell you uh, we're not often home on the weekends. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> not. Well, y'all are making great decisions along the way. Uh, the bottle design is fantastic. Um, the the whiskey inside it is just as amazing. And then the story behind it is, is fantastic too. Uh, and then you're also supporting some amazing men, uh, some, some American heroes. So uh, on that note, Brian, don't you go anywhere, but cheers, everybody. Um, yeah, cheers. We'll have our uh, review out tomorrow of Kentucky Al Rye. And then on Thursday will be the uh, new chocolate malted rye bourbon from Woodford Reserve Master's Collection. <laughs> oh, yes, that mouthful. mouthful. Well, Brian, thank you very much. It's been an amazing evening. And uh, thank you for always sticking around. And I uh, want to salute all of our veterans and all of our different armed forces. Yes, and thank do. you for everything you do to let us have this ridiculous whiskey channel we do only because of you guys. Otherwise, probably speaking some foreign language and definitely not having the great, great fears we have here in America. So cheers, everyone. Happy Veterans Day, all of our veterans, and we'll see yeah. you guys next week. Thank you for your service to everybody that's out there. We appreciate yeah. it. Cheers. 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 Mm.